Charlottesville, Virginia, is home to the author of one of the great documents in human history. I, I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. In the first year in law school, I decided I didn't want to be in law school and ended up in the bottom two-thirds of my class and then decided I wanted to stay, went back to law school and, in fact, ended up in the top half of my class. I won the international moot court competition. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only need 123 credits, and I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. We know it by heart. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. We've heard it so often, it's almost a cliche, but it's who we are. And I started thinking as I was coming over here, why is it that Joe Biden is the first in his family ever to go to a university? Why is it that my wife who's sitting out there in the audience is the first in her family to ever go to college? Why am I? the first Kinnick in a thousand generations to be able to get to university? Why is Glennis the first woman in her family in a thousand generations? We haven't always lived up to these ideals. Jefferson himself didn't, but we have never before walked away from them. Charlottesville is also home to a defining moment for this nation in the last few years. It was there on August of 2017 we saw Klansmen and white supremacists and neo-Nazis come out in the open. Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put you all back in chains. Their crazed faces, illuminated by torches, veins bulging. And the Secretary of State refusing to act on a morally abhorrent point. I hate to hear this country, I'm ashamed that this country puts out a policy like this that says nothing, nothing. It says continue the same. We put no timetable on. We make no specific demand. We don't set it down. I'm ashamed that's our policy. That's what I'm ashamed of. I'm ashamed of the lack of moral backbone to this policy. Well, I, you res may be I resent I'm that. I too. resent that deeply because. And burying the fangs of racism chanting the same anti-Semitic bile heard across Europe in the 30s. And they were met by a courageous group of Americans. And a violent clash ensued. Nearly 30 years later, and I publicly apologized to Anita because she didn't get the hearing she deserved. And the Senate Judiciary Committee has the power and obligation to set a standard for the nation. It should not be one of the most difficult places for women to lay out a story of abuse and harassment. And a brave young woman lost her life. And that's when we heard the words of the President of the United States that stunned the world and shocked the conscience of this nation. Spread your legs, you're going to be <laughs> frisked. Drop your hands. In. You say that to somebody in North Dakota, they think it's a frisk. Drop your hands inside, you know. They think you're in trouble, right? They tell you to drop your hands inside. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a little too formal now. <laughs> he said there were, quote, some very fine people on both sides. Very fine people on both sides? With those words, the President of the United States assigned a moral equivalence between those spreading hate and those of the courage to stand against it. And I went over, I guess, the 12th, 13th time to Kiev, and, uh, and I was going, supposed to announce that there was another billion-dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had. They were walking out to the press conference. Said, "No, nah, I said I'm not going to. We're not going to give you the billion dollars." They said, "You have no authority. You're not the president." The president said, "I said call him." <laughs> I said, "I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars." I said, "You're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here." And I think it was what six hours. I looked. I said, "I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money." Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> Got fired, and they put in place someone who was solid at the time.
And in that moment, I knew the threat to this nation was unlike any I had ever seen in my lifetime. I wrote at the time that we're in the battle for the soul of this nation. Well, that's even more true today. We are in the battle for the soul of this nation. I promise you, you'll see my 15-point plans and 19-point position papers, and you'll be able to make a judgment when Gary Hart and I stand there. Who knows more about foreign policy, Gary or me? And when you see that Dick Gebhardt and I stand there, you'll be able to make a judgment whether Dick Gebhardt or I know more about economic policy. But I believe history will look back on four years of this president and all he embraces as an aberrant moment in time. But if we give Donald Trump eight years in the White House, he will forever and fundamentally alter the character of this nation, who we are. And I cannot stand by and watch that happen. The press always asks me, don't I wish I were debating him? No, I wish you were in high school, I could take him behind the gym. That's what I wish. The core values of this nation are standing in the world, our very democracy, Everything that has made America, America is at stake. That's why today I'm announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Folks, America is an idea. An idea that's stronger than any army, bigger than any ocean, more powerful than any dictator or tyrant. It gives hope to the most desperate people on earth. It guarantees that everyone is treated with dignity and gives hate no safe harbor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it instills in every person in this country the belief that no matter where you start in life, there's nothing you can achieve if you work at it. That's what we believe. And above all else, that's what's at stake in this election. We can't forget what happened in Charlottesville. Even more important, we have to remember who we are. This is America. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs>